any racing game worth its salt has original circuits, completely clean sheet designs which cannot be found officially in any other game. From Maple Valley Raceway from Forza Motorsport to Okutama in the Grid series and even Rainbow Road. Oftentimes these original tracks are the ones that leave the biggest impression on their players. And when it comes to these, the Gran Turismo series surely takes the cake. Over the history of Gran Turismo, there have been 70 plus original circuits. And that's not even including the different variations of each. There are names which are familiar even to people who've never played these games. Tracks like High Speed Ring, Deep Forest, Midfield Raceway, El Capitan, the list is almost endless. Of course, the idea for original circuits in Gran Turismo came about as more of a necessity. Back in the day, it was far easier, cheaper, and less time consuming to just design a track from the ground up rather than try and base it on a real world circuit. And oftentimes when developers did try to do that, it wasn't very convincing. So the inspiration for original circuits was more out of convenience. Although Laguna Seca, a real world circuit, was brought in for GT2, it took until the fourth installment of the series for real circuits to actually become more prevalent. That said, even despite the rise of these well-known genuine racetracks, the appeal for the original stuff persisted long beyond that. So considering all of this, it was quite a shock to see that when Gran Turismo Sport released in October of 2017, after four years since the previous title, Gran Turismo 6, there were no returning original tracks. Sure, there were a handful of new designs, some of which are quite good, but not even a single one of the classics were brought back. And it was clear to see that many people were not entirely satisfied by this. To a lot of us, it seemed as though Polyphony saw these tracks as disposable, and as the series moved forward, they would just be left in the past. The point is that you can go anywhere to race at Spa or the Nürburgring, but if you wanted Trial Mountain, well, there was only one place to be. There was hope, however. With updates to the game bringing new and returning circuits, and with the idea of adding some of the classic originals being floated around as well. Sadly though, we never got any of these in GT Sport. Apart from Special Stage Route X, the massive oval, for some reason. But fear not, because in June of 2020, we got the reveal trailer of Gran Turismo 7, and wouldn't you know it, one of the first things to show up was Trial Mountain, one of the classics to have featured in every numbered Gran Turismo title. Something worth celebrating for sure, but as more and more got revealed, it became clear that things were not going to be quite the same as they were in the past. After Trial Mountain, we saw two more original circuits being brought back. The first of these to be revealed was High Speed Ring. As the name suggests, it's a high speed ring. Being part of the franchise from the start and featuring in every numbered GT game, except for GT3, it had already gone through its fair share of redesigns. Three in total. There was the first iteration which featured in Gran Turismo's 1 and 2, a new design for Gran Turismo 4, and another refresh for GT5 and 6. So seeing it remade yet again wasn't too surprising. And to be honest, not much has changed. The most notable difference is Turn 2 being tightened and as such has a larger braking zone, and also the pit lane entry being moved from the entrance to the final corner, as it had been from GT4 onwards, to the front straight as per the original layout. Visually it had been overhauled as well, with the track now placed in Hokkaido, Japan's northern island, and a more mountainous setting to reflect this. Personally, I think tightening turn 2 is a good change. For racing, it makes it more of an overtaking opportunity without ruining the flow of the circuit. It is still very much a high-speed affair. If you liked high-speed ring in the previous games, you're gonna like it here. That's pretty much a given. However, the same cannot quite be said for Trial Mountain, with the changes made here, although minor on the surface, having a much wider impact. So, what was different? Well, the whole circuit had been stretched out and was considerably longer than it had been. 1.5 kilometers longer, in fact. And the iconic final yeet chicane was gone and replaced with a much slower complex. You can probably tell from my tone of voice that I'm not a big fan of these changes. It seems as though the objective was to make it more realistic and make it work better for serious racing, like in sport mode, but the side effect is that it's a lot less fun to drive. Take a look at the final chicane. A sharp left immediately into a sharp right. It reminds me quite a lot of the final chicane at Catalonia and similar to that track, it completely destroys the flow of the circuit. The reason though is obvious. A slower corner means a longer braking zone, and so a better overtaking opportunity. And the reason why both the left and right are so sharp is so that the same thing applies in the reverse version as well. The result is that when you're not doing your super serious sport mode race and just driving to have fun, like most people do, it's not as good as it was before, particularly with slower cars. With the track also being considerably longer, it means that a lap in a stock first gen NX5 takes two and a half minutes. Especially ironic considering in the older games, Trial Mountain often appeared in the early events with these types of cars. The slower a car is, the more it relies on momentum to keep its speed up. So when you have an almost dead stop on the track, it makes it just a miserable experience to drive. The length of the circuit is an interesting topic as well. Basically, the corners on each end of the circuit are the same as they were, but the straights in between have gotten impossibly longer. Are we driving through a wormhole or something? How does this make sense? 
Again, visually it has had a significant upgrade. What I'll give them credit for is I really like how they contextualize the track within the environment through things like the buildings, access roads, and other trackside details. Whereas in the older games, it just feels like they dropped the track down in the middle of nowhere, here it feels a lot more like a real place that could actually exist. The only thing I don't like visually is that the tunnel feels too long and is also quite boring in its design and has lost some of the rustic charm of how it used to look. Also, a bit odd to place it in Sierra Nevada in the USA, since they always hinted at it being somewhat inspired by the UK. The Loch Ness Monster, the fact that it always appeared in the UK themed events, and of course the overall landscape, but it does follow a trend of US based circuits. Special Stage Route X was now placed in Utah, and another returning original, which we will get to, being put in the States as well. Also, since December 2019, the only real world circuits that they've added to the series have all been in the US. Gran Turismo's partnership with IMSA does go some way to explain that, but for the original circuits, I'm not really sure why they envisage so many of them to be in the States even when it doesn't really make sense. At this point, I wouldn't put it past them to say Tokyo Route 246 is in the USA if they ever brought it back. No, now it's Detroit Route 246 or some shit like that. Anyway, another thing that they probably had on their minds when they redesigned it was to make it more viable for faster cars, like Group 1. As much as I prefer the older design, 20 Group 1 cars flying around there wouldn't really be a good idea. So the track is worse for most others, but better for these top-end racing cars. Shame then that they didn't bother to add any races for them, because of course not. This is GT7 after all. And as we know, the developers only have three keys on their keyboards. Control, C, and V. But what annoys me the most is that they could have easily satisfied both parties here. Take a look at the final chicane. A massive empty space right in the middle. So what they could have done is make another variation with a cut through that resembles the old final chicane. That way, you've still got the newer tighter chicane for the faster cars and the super serious sport mode racing, as well as the older style chicane which would be much better for slower cars and classic cars and more fun in general. That would have been an easy win. They can still add it through an update, so what are you waiting for, Polyphony? Although I would consider most of the changes to be for the worse, one thing that can't be denied is that this track is unquestionably still Trail Mountain. The section of the track which they didn't fundamentally change, i.e. most of the corners, are great. The flow is still there, and they were smart enough to not mess too much with the elevation changes which were always a big part of what made Trial Mountain so memorable. Now, the third redesigned circuit brought back for GT7 was Deep Forest. Much like series producer Kazunori Yamauchi, Deep Forest has always been my favourite original circuit to have been there from the start. So, let's take a look. What the f*** is that? was my genuine reaction to seeing the layout for the first time. The track map kind of looks like they took the original and just smeared it across the ground. The changes are quite obvious, but somewhat to be expected. Again, we can see how a desire to make the circuit more realistic has crept in. The final section, which used to curve gently to the right before a long cambered left-hander led you down a hill into the final quick flick left, has been replaced with an elongated straight into a wide hairpin, followed by a gentle right downhill before rising back up to a sweeping left-hander to finish the lap. If I'm being honest, I don't actually mind this change too much. Of course, I have many fond memories of how it used to be, but I think the section they replaced it with is actually not too bad. Yes, again, we can make the argument of it being less fun in slower cars as it becomes more drawn out, but I feel like the fact that immediately after the hairpin you have the downhill section really helps to offset this. The final sweeper, you can argue, is less of a challenge compared to the old one, but the way it transitions from downhill to uphill with this compression means that it can be quite a challenge with a lot of cars. And, unlike the final chicane at Trial Mountain, the hairpin is a lot of fun to drive when racing with other cars in a tighter pack. So, although it's much less dramatic, the change that I really don't like is actually the preceding corner. What used to be a sweeping left onto the back straight has now been morphed into a much slower, squared off turn. It kind of ruins the rhythm of the section beforehand and doesn't even work as an overtaking place since the run into the corner is so short. So, why did they do this? Well, to me, in a similar way to Trial Mountain, it's to make the reverse version of the circuit more viable for serious racing. When we go in the opposite direction, we can see that coming off the back straight, this is now a good place to make a pass, whereas the older, faster curve wasn't. As we've seen, they do intend to use the reverse variations for sport mode as well, so in my view that seems like the goal. Make the track more feasible for serious online racing, to the detriment of basically anyone else who just wants to race these tracks for fun. Other than that, the first half of the track is pretty faithful to the original. The track width, camber and elevation all seem to match up, with the exception of the part just after the second tunnel which has been made a bit flatter. Again, it's been fully redesigned from the ground up and looks very nice. Everything you can see here has been made from scratch. Also, the track is now based in Switzerland. I guess they couldn't think of an excuse to put it in the US somehow. Overall, the changes to the Deep Forest are decent, with the exception of that one corner which I'm really not a fan of. Still, a lot better than Trial Mountain, and as my favourite original 
original circuit, I don't feel like it's a betrayal to what it used to be. But through all of these redesigns, there has been one clear trend, to make the circuits more realistic, in air quotes. The big concern for me is that by adding realism, we are taking away creativity. Part of what makes original tracks so special is that they're not bound by the constraints of reality, obviously. Of course, Gran Turismo is not Mario Kart, and so there have always been limitations as to what they can design, and for good reason. But more than anything, it feels like we're now at a point where the faux realism is overtaking the creative expression. I've shown how certain changes have been made specifically for the benefit of sport mode and more serious online racing, at the complete detriment when you drive these tracks in any other game mode. There are many people who have no interest in sport mode whatsoever, the majority of players in fact, and to them, it just seems like some of these tracks have been made worse for seemingly no reason and this philosophy would extend to any new tracks that they introduce. Gone are the days of these outlandish circuits like Cita di Aria or the Matterhorn, tracks that just couldn't exist in real life, and if they did would have to be modified drastically to make any sense. But they did exist in the older games, and they were awesome. This is what players in GT7 are missing out on, not to mention that traditional street circuits don't even exist in the game. Sure, we've got the Tokyo Expressway tracks, but since these are based on highways, they're a lot faster and more flowing than normal street circuits. I'm talking about the old school point and squirt tracks like Seattle, Rome, London, Paris, Madrid, I could go on. But it's amazing that an entire genre of circuits, one that's played a big part in the series in the past, doesn't even exist in GT7. I can only speculate that it's because they don't think they would work well for sport mode or live racing, so they just don't even bother. And if that really is their priority, then that's just sad. But it's not all bad. You see, last month, February 2023, we got a new original circuit. This circuit is nothing like the tracks we already have. Based in California on Highway 1, alongside the Pacific Ocean, it winds its way along the coastline and has some truly breathtaking visuals. And the track itself is a lot of fun to drive. With lots of elevation change and flowing corners, it doesn't feel so restricted and forced into being a realistic circuit like the tracks we've already seen. And clearly, a lot of effort has been put into it. There are tons of details and smaller references to the real-life location that it's based on. This one, I think, is pretty funny. Also quite morbid if you think about it. But there is just one issue with all of this. They call this track Grand Valley. <laughs> now, if you're relatively new to the series, that won't mean much. But if, like me, you've been around for a few years, that is a massive deal. To a lot of people, Grand Valley is the track of Gran Turismo. Like Trail Mountain and Deep Forest, it has been there from the very start and in every numbered game since then. Behind only Special Stage Route 11, it was the longest track and one of the hardest, and hosted the eponymous Grand Valley 300km Endurance Event, one of the most iconic races in the entire franchise due to being in Gran Turismo 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. That can't be said about any other race in the entire series. Obviously it didn't return in GT7 because Polyphony are seemingly incapable of giving us interesting races. Even in GT Sport where the track was absent, the outline of the shorter variation, Grand Valley East, was used as a symbol in the game. In a way, Grand Valley is Gran Turismo, which makes their decision to bring it back in this form quite astounding. When I saw the trailer announcing it, initially I didn't even realise it was supposed to be Grand Valley. I just thought they slapped the name on some new unrelated track as an homage. It was only when I saw the layout that it actually hit me. And for all the fanfare about Grand Valley returning and people making comparisons to previous games and whatnot, which I completely get, I just want to make one thing completely clear. This is not Grand Valley. That's not a point of discussion, it's just not. It's so fundamentally different beyond just the rough outline that it simply can't be. It's not just the setting and the visual elements, it's of course also the track layout. The final sector, for example, is completely different. The profile of each corner, including the camber, the width of the track, Hell, even the elevation has been totally changed. And when you add all of this together, you end up with a track which you can't really relate at all to the original Grand Valley from Gran Turismo's 1 through 6. The only parts that feel even remotely close to me are the entry to turn 1 and the complex at turns 7, 8, 9, and 10 from how they feel to drive. And that's only a vague resemblance at best. And this really makes me wonder, what was the point in bringing back this old circuit when your entire plan is to change it so radically that it hardly even resembles what you started with? Who does this appeal to? Not the newer players, because why would they care about Grand Valley? And not the old guard, because it's so far removed from what Grand Valley actually was. And I'm not saying any of this happened by accident. Like, Polyphony tried to make a faithful remake of the track and somehow ended up with this. They're not that incompetent, I think. But if you've never played the older games, never raced at the original Grand Valley, why would any of this matter? 
that's a fair point. As I've said, I think that on its own merit, it's a really fun and interesting track, both in its setting and design, when you remove it from the context of what it's pretending to be. But what I think is key, no matter what your perspective is, is that Grand Valley Highway is a compromise. It's not a completely brand new original circuit, but it's also not a remake. It's an awkward hybrid of the two. Clearly, Polyphony wanted to make a track based on this location and its topography, but also somehow tie it with another track they designed more than 25 years ago and has nothing to do with the setting. So whilst the track is not so heavily bound to the constraints of being realistic and good for racing, it is bound to being somewhat similar to Grand Valley in its general layout. Of course, I am assuming that the idea for a track based on the coastal highways of California came before the idea of a Grand Valley remake. More realistically, I think they started as two separate ideas and then became one. What I'm trying to say is that I believe if they are just fully committed to making a completely fresh design for this track, based solely on the real world location and nothing else, they could have created something even better. And I am quite conflicted. On one hand, it's great that they can design a track like this without having to bow down to the needs of online racing like the previous remakes. Take the reverse version, that first sector would be a mess online. How turn one tightens up, then it narrows massively over the bridge, and then you've got the really slow chicane right afterwards, it would be a nightmare. But it's fun, and that's what should matter the most. And they can still try and use it for sport mode anyway. But at the same time, I'm not really sure why they made it and didn't just do something completely new instead. In universe, they don't even attempt to explain it, but I've got my own headcanon because I'm weird like that. So in my version, the original Grand Valley was its own track in some other part of the world. Where exactly doesn't really matter, just not this area of California. The track was then closed down, probably due to complaints by those people who buy houses right next to racetracks and then complain about the noise because they're f***ing stupid. Then it gets paved over and turned into a shopping mall or something. Then, a group of enthusiasts decide to make an homage to it by using part of Highway 1 in California and creating their own loop which roughly resembles the original Grand Valley. This would explain why it's so different, but also has some resemblance to the original track. Oh well, they could technically still add the original Grand Valley as a separate circuit to GT7, but being pragmatic about it, this is supposed to be a replacement, so it's unlikely that they ever will. Track redesigns are nothing new to Gran Turismo. Gran Valley itself underwent a refresh between GT3 and 4, with the section after the second hairpin changed to have a more pronounced elevation, and replacing the right hand sweeper with a couple of more squared off corners, among various other minor changes to the layout. I actually prefer this redesign to the original, although the changes are not so obvious on the surface. A track that did have a very obvious change was Special Stage Route 11. Being part of the original Gran Turismo, it actually stood above Grand Valley as the longest and hardest track in the game. It was absent from GT2, but made its return in GT3, and when it did, it was clear to see that the section that used to run underneath the main straight, with a couple of tricky chicanes, was bypassed entirely for a much simpler run with a single chicane which could be straight lined completely. Essentially what they'd done was to make the longest and most difficult track from GT1 shorter and easier. This change was more in line with the ones we see in GT7, and as such was a bit more divisive. Being honest, I think this type of change was inevitable, and would have happened at some point had Route 11 continued into the later games. As the series strived for more realism, a section of track like this, which could sometimes end up looking like bumper cars, was not really going to cut it. Even with the change, the track is still quite difficult, and also visually it looks a lot nicer, which is a bonus. And one more case I'd like to highlight is Special Stage Route 5. This one is a bit different, because between GT4 and GT5, its layout stayed pretty much the same, with just the elements around the track being modified. A lot of work was put into making the track fit as part of a city. Whereas the previous design was just a track placed in with no regard for how the roads would actually work as city streets, the redesign features a lot more intersections, turn-offs and diverging paths away from the main circuit that makes the whole thing feel more real. They even make reference to how it linked with the then new Special Stage Route 7, which is pretty cool. So on one hand, that's great but on the other, they seem to make it completely lifeless. The advertising boards and illuminated signage have been completely removed. There are grandstands, but they are always empty, so there's no flashing lights from cameras or the air horns that added so much atmosphere in the previous games. It seems like this was all intentional, but I don't really know why. Sure, it's nighttime, but this is a racetrack in the middle of a large city. Are we supposed to believe that it's completely deserted, even when there's racing cars pounding around? 
So, as you can see, a redesign of a track is a very complex thing, much in the same way it would be in real life. You have to realise what you're changing, and the reasons for making that change, whilst also understanding what the appeal of the track was in the first place, and not contradicting that with your changes. You might even wonder if it's worth the effort to overhaul the track at all. For example, many of the originals stayed almost exactly the same between GT4 and GT5. Their PS2 versions merely ported over with minor revisions, and unlike the standard cars, I didn't see too many people have issues with this. If we go back to 2017, just after the release of GT Sport, in an interview with GT Planet, Kazunori was questioned on the lack of returning original circuits. His response was quite interesting, stating that there was no particular reason for this, and that they even had a version of Deep Forest running in GT Sport, with some minor issues. These related to the scaling of certain trackside details. I mean, curbstones that are wider than the cars? That is pretty silly. Anyway, let's take a look at some unrelated footage from a new circuit in GT Sport, Dragon Trail Seaside. As we come through here, you can see... Uh... Ah, well, that, uh, that's funny. But, uh, but that's just one corner, it's not like it's in other places as well. Yeah, I don't feel like this was actually as big of an issue as he makes it out to be. Certainly doesn't explain why they completely redesigned all of these tracks. From the sounds of it, they at least flirted with the idea of more faithful versions of these circuits, most likely with a new coat of paint and some minor alterations. No, I think the main impetus for this was, as I've said before, down to sport mode. We have to remember that back in 2017, the whole GT World Championships and the live events hadn't begun yet, and it's possible that if they'd never taken off, things would have been way different as far as these original tracks were concerned. Making them work better for more serious racing certainly wouldn't have been as much of a priority, and it's also possible that if they hadn't been so completely overhauled for GT7, we might have seen them come earlier as updates for GT Sport instead. It's also possible that the FIA had some amount of influence on the track designs as well, given their involvement with the online championships, but that's just speculation on my part. Either way, it's Grand Valley Highway which I think is the most interesting by a long shot, and the main reason why I decided to turn this topic into its own video. It doesn't conform at all with the trends we've seen for the previous redesigns at any point in the series. So it's no surprise that it's the one which has the fan base the most split. Of course, the extremes of each side of the argument will be the most vocal. That's just how the internet works. On one side, we have people who believe that it's a disgrace to the franchise, and Polyphony are just insulting the loyal fans who've followed the series for decades. And on the other, those who praise the redesign for its originality, and lament those wanting the old track back for being stuck in the past. Each side has its points, but I feel like each of them missed the key point. If I had to choose between not getting Grand Valley back, or having this reimagined version, I would choose to just not have it at all. This does nothing for me. It's not Grand Valley, and it's not its own completely original thing either. I don't know what Polyphony was thinking. In fact, they were this close to keeping the name Grand Valley Speedway, as we can see from the trailer. Thankfully they didn't, in part because it's not really a speedway anymore. But maybe this type of division is what they were trying to create, because if they made a more accurate version of Grand Valley, or a fully original track on California's coastal highway, then I wouldn't be making this video. And in general, I don't think there would be as much intrigue as there currently is, so maybe that was their plan. Or maybe I'm giving them too much credit and they honestly think that this is what longtime fans really want. But one thing I know for certain is that if you're unsure in your opinion about these retcon tracks, then you better figure it out soon, because I've got a strong feeling that this one won't be the last.